So now that we've done the aggregate demand curve, now I'm going to do the aggregate supply curve. And I do this with a little bit more simple presentation. This is actually equilibrium in the labor market a lot of times. The idea is that price increases can change real wages and that will affect the labor supply. And if the labor supply changes, output changes. So you could think about this whole idea about wages dropping, more people work. But wages themselves in nominal terms don't change all the time. So it's important to notice that prices are sticky, prices don't move. And this is a very Keynesian concept. And I'll mention these two ideas, Keynesian and classical in a minute. But, but according to one school of thought, pr wages are the stickiest of all. People do not take wages and wage cuts very often. So they move in one direction. Goods prices generally move up, but they can move down. It's much harder to see a wage drop. So psychologically, people will not accept it. They would actually rather take layoffs than wage cuts. Uh, but at the same time, a lot of times wages are slow. People get an annual review and then their wage goes up. And a lot of times it has to do with CPI or another government issued number on inflation. So you might get a raise based on the inflation number for the past year and only after you've waited a whole year. So wages are slowest of all and they're usually one direction only. Goods prices are slow. There's something called menu costs that it actually costs money and time to change prices. The same thing is true about psychology. People don't like goods prices. You can spend a lot of time looking at ways where um, companies can ch trick consumers in a way um, by making the portion size or the box smaller but keeping the price the same because people don't want to see the price go up. They would actually rather have less for their for in the box than pay more for the box. So that, that's an interesting application of psychology. Um, now financial prices are the fastest of all. And exchange rates, um, stock prices, uh, interest rates move second by second or even with millisecond timing. So financial prices, because there's no product, everything's quoted electronically, you don't have to have run a factory to make these products, it's all electronic. Financial prices move the quickest of all. So in my, in, and again, this is my take on it. Wages are slowest, goods are slow, but a little bit faster, and financial is the fastest of all. Now what this means is that because wages are sticky, you can have a price increase that lowers the real wage the real wage, which is adjusted for prices, goes down. And so if people won't take a pay cut, inflation will give them a pay cut. And if you remember labor supply and labor demand, you can actually have an increase in workers if there's a wage cut. Remember, the law of labor demand would say that if wages go down, more people get hired. And in the production function, more workers mean more GDP. So this is important if you assume sticky prices, but that goes with this Keynesian school of thought. So Keynesian school of thought is named after John Maynard Keynes, who was a British economist who had a lot of thinking but during, before, during, and after the Great Depression in the 30s. And this is a school of thought that has more government intervention in the economy, more government spending, and a little room for intervention in the economy. Classical economics, which goes all the way back to Adam Smith in the 1700s, is laissez-faire or hands-off, very much against government intervention because the economy should fix itself. In my thinking, these are similar given enough time. The, my thinking, the only difference is the adjustment of prices. If prices are a little slow, Keynesian will work. If prices move very quickly, classical works. So it has to do with the speed of price adjustment. A lot of times people have judgments over the role of government. That, that's philosophical, but here I'm talking about the economic role of the price in allocating resources. This uses the market, but it assumes some sort of sluggishness or slowness in the economy. And this is, does not assume that. So once these catch up, these will actually look the same. Right? Other schools of thought, like Marxist school of thought, would actually reject this entirely. Keynesian and classical look, like, look the same once prices have sufficient time to adjust. So if you assume that wages are sticky but prices aren't, an increase in prices will cause more workers to be hired, and if more workers are hired, GDP goes up. And so you can have an increase in CPI that leads to higher GDP in equilibrium in the labor market because labor supply and labor demand are in equilibrium. The, the AD curve was goods market. This is labor market. So AS, assuming the Keynesian school of thought, sticky prices, slow adjustment, looks like an upward sloping curve. If you don't 
adhere to this and you say, well, every price moves equally, an increase in prices is exactly canceled by an increase in wages. In other words, if prices go up 20%, your boss would instantly give you a 20% raise to match. That would mean that there's no change in the real wage, no change in the amount of employment, and no change in GDP. So the classical aggregate supply curve is vertical. Okay, and so if you look at changes in these, only Keynesian economics allows GDP to go up. So only in Keynesian economics can government spending or tax policy change GDP and change employment. Right? So these are the two schools of thought side by side. Now the shifts, the big one are technology. Technology will increase AS and cause more items to be produced at the same price. And so it's the same price level will have more GDP. I think of how the internet has allowed more people to write papers, send documents, go shopping, all for cheaper. And so technology is a good application of an increase in aggregate supply. And you could do the same thing here. Right? AS moves to the right. Now, the things that can move aggregate supply left or right is input costs. Okay, that's the big one for, for this policy. And I kind of group these together. I'll say inputs in terms of uh, intermediate goods, but this includes taxes, oil prices, or wages. Right? So inputs could be labor, workers go into all production, oil goes into production, and a lot of different things. And then taxes, which is obviously a big component of policy. If you raise taxes, the input costs for businesses go up. So this can move either way. All right, so anything that makes it more expensive to do business. In this case, it would be high costs, and this would be lower. And that could be cheaper oil, lower wages, or lower taxes. That would be an increase in supply. Higher would be a decrease in sub supply. So if you could think of these input costs as a group, that's one easy way to do it. All right, so that's what shifts it to the left or to the right. Now, we can combine these. And again, there's a couple different ways to do this. I treat these as identical given enough time. And, and usually I, I look at the Keynesian short run because this matches what central banks and other policymakers do. But if we put these together, we have AS and AD. All right? How do these look together in the long run? And so what we're going to do is we're going to combine an AD shift, which gives you a temporary change, and then eventually allow all prices to adjust, you can get a long run change. So if we have an increase in spending, and so a lot of times this could be government, but it also could be consumer or investment, you will shift AD to the right. Temporarily, or in the short run, prices go up and GDP goes up. All right, so this is the effect of expansionary policy that we'll talk about in a little bit. But if you have an increase in spending, that will cause more competition for products, pushing prices up, more competition for workers, pushing wages up, but it will also create jobs to produce the goods that are being purchased. So you can show that these two crossing points are higher, GDP goes up, and CPI goes up. So that is the short run that I like to talk about. Now, what about the long run? Given enough time, classical and Keynesian look the same. And so you can say, well, CPI goes up, what about wages going up? All right, what about prices going up? That will go back and feed into these input costs. All right, and so over time, the input costs can adjust, shifting AS to the left. All right, and so this is an original short run, but in the long run, everything adjusts. That's what makes it the long run. If you look at this point, you wind up with your original GDP, but with even higher prices. All right? And so some, sometimes very libertarian and very classical economists would say that the classical aggregate supply curve is all, always, that there's no adjustment, that prices adjust equally, and then this is your starting point. But you can combine Keynesian to get some sort of an increase in GDP in the short run, followed by the classical result in the long run. Right, and so this is sometimes known as the LRAS, or Long Run Aggregate Supply Curve, in which case this would be the SRAS, or Short Run Aggregate Supply Curve. Generally when I talk, and in these lectures, this, I'm going to talk about the short run simply because around the world policymakers do talk about this idea that 
CPI and GDP are simultaneously managed by central bankers. You could have more intervention and have policymakers and elected officials using fiscal policy, but even if you're just talking about the role of money and monetary policymakers, you will see that policymakers sort of treat the short run aggregate supply as kind of what they're basing all of their decisions on. So we've derived the AD curve based on equilibrium in the goods market. This is equilibrium in the labor market, and all I didn't really draw it, we're assuming that high prices will lower the real wage, causing more labor to be demanded, and also affect supply, and that will raise GDP. That gives us a relationship where higher prices and higher GDP have an equilibrium point. All right? If wages and prices adjust, you have a classical supply curve, in which case GDP is unaffected because the wage and price increases cancel out exactly. However, if goods prices move faster than wages, you would see this upward sloping curve. All right? And so this gets to the idea of sticky prices and the role of government and other factors. All right? So while these both look like very drastic schools of thought, most people believe that it's simply a question of time, and given enough time to adjust, you wind up with all the curves on the same graph, meaning that Keynesian and classical wind up converging in the long run.